everyone, I'm Maddie and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm at Eureka, which is our National Children's Museum, and I'm joined by two of Eureka's enablers. Please welcome... Russ! And... Lorraine! And what are we trying to do today, guys? We're attempting... Eight experiments! For eight planets. Which is pretty ambitious, but we are going on a space trek throughout our solar system. So, we need a rocket, and all good adventures in space start with an exciting rocket launch. So, take it away, guys. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one, blast! Oh. Whoa, and off we go! Let's go, let's go, let's go! Oh. <laughs> Carnage, already! Okay, so, first up we are heading to Mercury. Now, Mercury is the smallest planet, and it's also the planet that is closest to the Sun. It's a terrestrial planet, which means it's got a rocky surface. But to tell us more about that, Ross! Hello there, I have made for you a model of the surface of Mercury, but I've made this out of flour and uh, some lovely cocoa powder. The problem is it's a bit flat. Mercury's covered in craters and great big holes made by asteroids and meteorites smashing into it at high speed. Should we make some asteroid impacts? Yes. Okay, there are your asteroids. Some asteroids for you. Asteroids for you. <laughs> asteroids for me. Already and bombard! <laughs> craters on the surface of Mercury. Next up we have Venus. Now, Venus is a similar size to Earth, but unlike Earth, it rotates in the opposite direction. Now, I don't know about you, but when I think of Venus, I think of nice blue, calm colours and Greek goddesses, but that couldn't be further from the truth, could it? No, it's a volatile planet. It's the planet with the most volcanoes on it. We're going to recreate those volcanic eruptions using vinegar, washing up liquid, food colouring, and if you want to help me, Maddie, we're going to add some bicarbonate of soda and make them FOMO. Whoa. So there you go, those are our volcanoes. So even though Venus isn't as close to the sun as Mercury, it is the hottest planet. That's because the sulfuric acid clouds surrounding it, trapping the heat in, a bit like a greenhouse effect. And that's what makes it hotter than the Mercury. So there you go, that is Venus. And we're now moving on to a planet I think you guys might know quite well. It's called Earth. That's right, it's our home planet. And what makes Earth so special is the fact that 70% of Earth's surface is covered in water, the ocean. But of course, we humans, we want to go and explore the rest of the solar system, which means we need to get off Earth. How are we going to do that? Well, the problem with Earth is it's got quite a lot of gravity. It sticks to the floor. What goes up must come down. Luckily, I've developed some special paper rocket technology. It's going to blast us off out of the atmosphere and out of our gravity well. Let's pop that on there. This is our compressed air launcher. I'm going to make sure I've got lots of pressure. When I pump this, it fills a tube with compressed air. All that stored energy is ready to be released. Three, two, one. Whoa, where did that even go? Awesome. Okay, so there we go. We have left Earth and we're actually on our way now to Mars. Now, we are exploring Mars right now, except we haven't sent humans to Mars. No, no. We are using robots. And this here is Archimedes. And Archimedes is a replica. It's Eureka's very own Curiosity rover. And he's just ran here by a remote control. And he's there on the surface of Mars looking for the presence of water, taking soil samples. But what's really interesting is that here we can control Archimedes from a simple joystick. But Houston, here on Earth, when they control Curiosity, once they make an instruction, they send him something to do, it will take him around half an hour to receive that instruction before he does anything. So there you go. That is the Curiosity rover on Mars. And now we are moving to Jupiter. And Jupiter is the biggest planet. It is a gas giant. It's huge. Humongous! Jupiter is the biggest planet of the solar system. It has got enormous storms, massive swirling clouds of hydrogen gas. Now, they won't let me play the hydrogen in the museum, but I have got a massive swirling storm of water. There we go, a big tornado just like the massive storm on Jupiter. But Jupiter's is about three times bigger than Earth. What? It's humongous! Imagine this three times bigger than Earth, and this is called the Red Spot, isn't it? Mm, it is Red Spot. Um, it travels about 300 miles an hour, the winds whizzing around there, so it's quite a, quite a vigorous one. Wow, okay, 
Next up we have Saturn. Now you might know Saturn is the planet that has rings around it and you'd be right, but it's not the only planet to have rings around it. It's just the one with the rings are most visible. Now when we first, well when astronomers first discovered Saturn, they thought those rings were solid, but they're not, are they? No, on closer inspection they're bits of rock, ice, dust that have all been pulled in by the gravity of Saturn. Now if you can imagine this is one of those rocks. It's orbiting round Saturn really, really fast. Now there are thousands of bits of rocks and dust and ice all orbiting around Saturn and that's what creates the illusion of it having solid rings but actually it's just the amount of debris that's going round. Well, okay, and as we said, Saturn, it's not the only planet to have rings. In fact, Uranus, our next planet on our journey, also has rings. Except it's the only planet in our solar system that spins on its side. But Uranus is also a bit smelly. It is a bit bit smelly I'm afraid. It's a gas giant like Jupiter and Saturn but the gas it's made out of is quite familiar. It's uh, <laughs> methane, the same gas you make when you trump. Oh mm. what? Which leaves us last but not least with Neptune and Neptune is the planet that is furthest from the sun which means it's mega mega cold, really cold. So cold you need a serious jumper. <laughs> they don't actually have snow on Neptune but I thought I'd make some anyway because it's my favourite thing to do when it's cold on Earth. But uh, there you go, this is called a super absorbent polymer. When I add a bit of water to this powder, you see it absorbs up and it all expands out. And it's uh, originally designed by NASA, they were going to make some nappies for astronauts. Whoa, okay. So there we go, that is our nappy snow, which is just reminding us of how cold it is on Neptune. So there you go, those are our eight experiments for our eight planets, but we want to end on a question. Now imagine that the whole universe has been shrunk right down till the sun is this size. This is our model sun right here. Now if the sun is this big, my question is how big do you think the Earth would be and how far away would the Earth be from this sun here? Well, let's find out. I'm gonna go and join Ross and Lorraine. So they have walked the distance of the Earth or where the Earth would be placed from the sun. What do you reckon, 10 meters? 20 meters? No, no, it's much further. Come with me. Where are you guys? Are we still there? Still there, come on. Okay, come on, come, come, come on. How many further. meters away are we? Further. There we go, we are about 60 meters at this scale away. And look, we're tiny, tiny Earth is so little. Would you, wow. would you so there you go. That is how big the Earth would be in relation to that sun. Guys, we have done that in under eight minutes. Hey. So that is eight planets with eight experiments in eight minutes. Rock and roll. Phew. Space is huge. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, stay curious, and I'll see you very soon. Bye. Bye.